What's up, everybody? Welcome back to the Backpack Bash Bonanza uh, Brawl. I don't know. Backpack Bash. That's enough. Um, today's video is on the Phoebe backpack. Check out this cutie. I love her. I love her, I have to say. The design is so brilliant and it just, it kept me guessing at every turn because this was the first one that I'd ever made. Um, I've been eyeing it for a long time. I honestly thought that it was a lot smaller because it's called a mini backpack, but it is small enough that like it won't fit my laptop. But you can see if we're gonna do the, compa the hand comparison, like the snack pack was a true mini backpack because it's the size of my hand. So you can see this one is the size of several of my hands. Um, but this little bag is so cool. This construction here, this like handle situation. It has an external zipper here, and then it has this front zipper pocket, which is huge in and of itself. And then the main section is giant, and it has this uh, zipper pocket as well. So this is a great little bag. Big bag, little big bag, uh, medium, medium. It's a medium size bag. Um, it also, so it goes to backpack like you saw, and then because the straps are removable, you can take them off and you can wear this bag as a sling or as a crossbody. So let's see. So I'm gonna try sling. This is my first time trying it. So let's see how it goes. So a sling, you just connect um, opposite corners. And it's cool because you can, you know, choose your corners. People who are left and right handed, they tend to have different preferences. So that's a cool part of it. Did I just put it on backwards? No, I got it. So you can wear it like that as a sling or choking myself. Or if you unhook the all the way from the bottom and hook both to the top, then it becomes a crossbody or a shoulder bag. So it's just a really cool design. I do think it would be mega cute if it was smaller, like the snack pack, but honestly, I don't know that you could uh, execute it. It would be tough. You'd have to make some changes. Um, so that being said, the bag itself is really I was gonna say fun to make and it was fun in the sense that I'd never done anything like it before but it definitely was a little bit challenging but I do not want to deter you I don't want to let you or lead you on to think that it can't be done because obviously it can be made and it is a gorgeous product I highly highly recommend giving it a go I would just say maybe don't try to do it all in one go or try to film a video in one day that's due tomorrow because obviously that adds stress and um just makes it more challenging but cutting it wasn't hard um the actual construction method wasn't hard it was just a lot of layers and definitely my arm is a little sore because you have to use a lot of guidance with your left arm so that being said i want you to make this bag this bag is so cool and jenny deserves all the praise all the accolades for this design because it is just mind-blowing and yeah, so without further ado, get into it. Oh, also um, check the description box below for a discount code now through next Sunday for 25% off. I believe it's 25% off. Um, but yeah, be sure to make it and post in both of our groups. I will link Jenny's group below as well and um, enjoy. Oh yeah, so I forgot to mention that this bag has two options of being finished. The way that I made it, it has no raw edges on the inside at all and no binding, which is what made it more challenging. But Jenny includes instructions for a bound method. And I do think that doing the binding in this bag would really make it a lot um, just less, like you wouldn't have to use so much muscle to get it done. Um, because you would, I, I assume that you would be binding this back section here and that's the final turn. And, uh, yeah, so please don't be deterred. I want you to try it and I'm definitely going to make it again and I will try the binding method so I can compare the two. And also, um, don't mind the look, 
because I've been in the studio all day trying to get this video done for you. Um, please give me a like, hit subscribe, turn on the notification bell if you haven't already, and then you will be alerted whenever my videos come out. And uh, I really appreciate you being here and happy sewing. So materials check. Um, we have two mains exterior lining. And I have interfaced with Decaville Light on my cotton here. Okay, so two mains. And then this is going to be the front pocket, the lower front pocket, so exterior main. And then my gussets, so both same situation. Um, so this is going to be my zipper gusset, and this will be my bottom gusset. And then I have two sets of pockets. Um, one zipper pocket will go inside, and one will go on the back exterior, so that is my linings for those. And then the way that the pattern is designed, you have these two freestanding lining pieces. And so they don't have coordinating mains, but so this is the front pocket back and this is the lining front panel. This is a very interesting, um, creative way. Sorry, I had a total brain fart there, but very creative way to do a no binding, no drop in pattern by turning through pockets twice. I've never seen this done before. Um, it was a little bit of a head scratcher for me at first, but then I watched Jenny's videos and um, yeah, it's a pretty genius way to do it. Uh, truth be told, I was trying to avoid doing so many pockets, but I'm gonna do it as the pattern is written and we're gonna see how it all shakes out because I'm really interested to try this method, the double pocket turn to no binding. Okay, so continuing with uh, pattern pieces, this is the exterior front top piece. I have my handle, I have a backpack strap and a second one here, and then I have my two strap anchors, and now you will see in the construction that I changed this up, so mine are two and a half inches long by two inches wide, and then I have two zipper overlays. I'm also changing this up from how the pattern is written instead of just doing um old school like turned cotton together and in, inlaying a zipper i'm just going to do what i always do and add an overlay and then we have these cutesy little guys and these are going to actually go on the end of the zipper like so and then for hardware i have four zippers so i've got my big zipper this will be my main zipper and then I have my front pocket zipper and then my two pockets. So one for lining and then one for the back panel. I have four zipper pulls. Sorry about my hair. Um, so for hardware, I'm going to be using these guys um, because the bag has its straps connect at the top and at the bottom to you can disconnect them and set them up in a myriad of ways to make the pattern convertible. So I'm using these guys. So I'm one inch down here for my strap anchor and then the clip will go on that side. And then I'm changing my straps up to be a half inch wide because I don't have three quarter inch hardware and I'm thinking that one inch wide might be too big. So I'm using half inch slides and then half inch clasps and there's more of them over there but this is just what I grabbed. But yeah, so I have four lobster clasps, four triangle clippy thingies, and then two strap slides. And I think that concludes the material. So let's get started. I'm going to go ahead and get the prep work out of the way. So, um, you know, step one, I'm totally straying from the pattern. Uh, but if you've been following me for any amount of time, you know that I generally do all the prep work in the beginning. So that includes things like straps and um you know, anything that I have to sew before I can complete, I want to get that done. So I'm going to start off with my two straps. I'm going to prep my handle and then I'm also going to prep my strap anchors, my zipper overlays and my actual zipper. And so just knock out the super boring one, my straps. So because I am going to be doing half inch straps. I'm going to do my little trifold method that I always do. So folding one at long edge in toward the center and then clipping all the way down. And I'm going to repeat that for this second strap as well. Okay. 
Okay, so for the handle, I want this to be as straight as possible. And my handle, I am gonna make one inch wide instead of the three quarter inch wide. So, also straight from the pattern on that one. But so I'm just gonna mark right down the center and then fold my long edges in toward it. And I want this to be as straight as possible because this is not going to, this is just gonna be a too long um, edge fold in and then stitched situation. So I don't want it to be wavy or anything like that. So I'm gonna also use some tape to ensure that I get everything right. Okay, lastly, I need to finish prepping my overlays here. So from the back, I'm going to draw my zipper box on it. And so this is a seven inch zipper box opening. And so this is that uh, zipper template that I designed. If you're interested, the link is in the description box. And so I'm just going to lay that on here. Do, do, do. Okay. And so now I'm just going to trace that zipper box there and then repeat that process on this side. Alrighty, so now we are ready for Mod Podge on these guys. First, burn your little Hairy scaries off, scary hairies. That reminds me of the little world of Richard Scary. I used to watch that when I was a kid. Or the busy life of Richard Scary, something like that. He was like a worm, drove a car. Haven't thought about him in a long time. I remember laying on the floor at my Nana's house. We always laid in front of the TV on the floor with pillows and watched Disney movies and the Nickelodeon shows after school, whatever they were called, I can't remember. Like, Hey Dude was a good one. What's the other ones? There's so many good ones. Okay, so what I like to do for these guys is fold them so that I can get both edges at once. And then just a thin, quick coat of Mod Podge. And this is just regular Mod Podge. This is not the fabric. Um, you can use Eileen's Fabric Fusion. You can use a quick layer of base coat. Uh, you can leave it raw. But of course, I like to make it, I like to do this so that it doesn't let the cork peel, the underlayment of the cork peel whenever it's agitated by the zipper. This is interesting. So this cork is not from Fabric Funhouse. Um, it's different, it has a different backing, but Talia has been out of black cork for a while, so I had to order from a different shop. And while the the thickness is there, it's really, it. I don't notice any difference with that. It just has a different backing. It's almost, it reminds me of a woven Band-Aid. And so you can see that even after I burnt it, and then, or can you see? Even after I burnt it, it's still like peeling a little bit. But once the Mod Podge dries, I'll just burn it again. Okay, so now I'm gonna pop to the machine and I'm going to, oh wait, I have one more thing to prep. What am I thinking? Chill out, Nicole. I'm gonna get my zipper pull on here. And then we're gonna lay our little zipper pieces, overlay end pieces, and get this guy going. Okay. Oh gosh. 
All right, so my little pieces, where are they? Here they are. So you're gonna get these pieces. And what we're gonna do is create a little zipper sandwich situation. But what you wanna pay attention to is make sure that your curves are going the right way when they're laid right sides together. And so I'm gonna lay the end of my zipper right on my lining. First, I'm gonna straighten this up. There we go. So now, sandwich the zipper right side up against your exterior, but in between both layers. And then clip into place. And then I'm gonna repeat the same process on the other side, being mindful of the direction of my curve. So the curve needs to match. You see how it goes down? This one also goes down. You need them to make sure, or make sure that they're in the same direction. Oh my gosh, broke another one. All right, so now we're ready to go start to sew. So I'm gonna go to the machine, I'm gonna stitch quarter inch, I'm gonna stitch these together back stitching really well, and then I'm gonna flip them both toward each other and top stitch, and I'm gonna repeat that on the other side. And then I'm gonna sew all the way around my anchors. And then for this, this is my handle, so I'm not going to sew all around the perimeter. Right now, I'm just gonna sew right down on either side of that fold line. And then, of course, sew around all sides of my straps. Okay, so I'm using a size four stitch length, size 18 Schmitz leather needle, uh, Tex 45 size swag thread. Kicked my foot pedal across the studio. So I actually think I'm just gonna leave my, I'm gonna pull just this down and leave my lining piece folded up so that I don't run into the issue of it looking weird on the inside, my top stitching. Loop this guy down here, do the same process. While I'm here, I'm just gonna run some stitching down the edges to hold this in place. Shape reminds me of like a knife. Maybe, oh, the scream knife. I think that's what it's making me think of. Doesn't it? Sorry, that's a really weird sound. I was trying to be like a murdery sound, but I've never murdered, so I don't really know what that sounds like. Um, okay, so all around the four edges here.
This cork is a lot stretchier too, I'm noticing, than the Fabric Funhouse cork, which could be good, I'm thinking, with the construction style of this bag, because it's another, it's just like the snack pack, where we're stitching in a circle around the zipper. And yeah, so the, the little, the slight stretch might help, but we will see. Okay, so this is my handle, so I'm just gonna stitch down the center lines because later in construction, we'll do the outside lines. Okay, so I have all of my straps, my anchors, all of that jazz prepped and ready to go. And I'm just going to, you know, continue in pure Nicole fashion and not follow the pattern. Um, so I'm going to finish my straps and then I'm going to install my strap anchors onto my back panel. And then I'm also going to add my back zipper pocket. So let's grab our strap slides and finish our straps here. I'm just gonna act like she's not sitting right in the way. Excuse me. I like that she acts like I'm not trying to use my cable. Jersey, move, go on. Hey, you're in the way. Don't bite me. Go on. Thank you. Okay, so. We are just gonna make these regular old straps. This is just like how I make the Paradigm strap or the Serona strap. So my nice edge, I always do that, or I do the opposite edge around the inside because when it's, this inside one gets hidden by the folds. Repeat on this side. It's okay. Clemmy's over here sleeping on the ground. She just got scared when I picked up my rivet press. She's such a jumpy pup. All right, and then now we need to take our hardware, add it, make sure your strap's not twisted, and then feed it back up and through. And then other hardware on the opposite end.
All right, so our straps are done. I'm going to set those to the side for now. Clear my space here. I'm not going to put my rivets away just yet because I'm going to change up the way that the strap anchors are done. Instead of having them laid right on top of the back panel, I'm going to do recessed. At least that's my thought. Let's see how it looks. So I'm thinking some recessed. Yeah, maybe even at an angle so that when it's on your body, it lays nice. So I think that's what I'm going to do. So I'm just going to line up my panel here. I'm going to center it so that I'm sure to get the correct measurement. Then I'm just going to kind of eyeball it and see where I like it. Now you got to keep in mind that we need to keep our hardware far enough away from the edge so that whenever we are stitching this panel to the rest of the bag, that it gives it enough leeway and doesn't mess with our presser foot. And while we're laying things out, I'm just going to lay this here and check out. So that's also more than enough room there. The other thing too is so I'm going to be adding rivets here to hold this in place. So that's just something else to consider. So I might need to be moved up just a touch higher. I'm thinking that once it's on your body and it's being worn that you know this hardware will flip up. So I think this will be good. So let's give it a go. You know, and if it doesn't work out, I guess I'll just have to keep it. Add to my ever-growing backpack collection. Okay, so I'm going to cut my slice one and a half inches. And I'm doing it right here in this corner section. So it looks a little not even. So I'm actually going to angle it slightly more this way. Yeah, I think that looks good. And then to make sure that I get the same cut, what I'm going to do is just make my slice here with my X-Acto knife. And then I'm going to fold it in half. So that way they're not weird. Okay, then now to insert our anchors, we are going to slide the strap anchor, the sewn strap anchor right side down. So the seam is face up here and I'm just sliding it down about an inch or so. I want to make sure that I have enough room that once the hardware is on here to slide it back down and through to adhere it. So about an inch. And I'm going to jump over to the machine really quick and I'm going to stitch right here, right above this cut line. I'm going to stitch just inside of the width of my strap anchors. I will be right back. Alrighty, so I got it all stitched down. You can see my stitch line right there. And then before I move on and get the hardware on and shove the remaining strap anchor back down through, I'm going to mark my rivet holes here. So that way it's nice and flat and even. Otherwise it gets a little uneven and uh, just can get a little funky. So I like to do two rivets. I think one rivet's more than enough. Yep, I'm actually just going to do one rivet. And so I got this tool at Tops and Bobbins. I think they're called that template shop now. 
Um, it's called the Rivet Guide Placement. You can also, oh, I always forget that on my zipper template, I did a one inch and a one and a half, but because I didn't have, it worked out that I grabbed this because mine only has the double rivets. But yeah, so rivet template placement, rivet placement template. Having a hard time with words today. Shocker. Alrighty, so we've got our hardware and I'm going to slide it on so that it's facing the back panel. And then you just got to carefully push the other end of that strap anchor up and through like so. Repeat on this side and then we will lay the panel down and make adjustments as needed. So I like to kind of pull on it, make sure that it's nice and taut. You can see it totally displaces the panel and that's fine because as soon as you readjust it, it's going to lay flat. See? The good part about um, doing hidden strap anchors with cork is that because you can cut it, you can cut into it because it's a raw edge. So you don't have to treat it like fabric. So I like to make sure the raw edge is laying nice and flat after I get the remaining piece through. Okay. And then now, because we've already punched our, or made our hole marks, we'll just punch them and insert our rivets. Oh, sorry about the dogs barking. Since I'm only doing one rivet on each instead of the two like I normally do, I'm going to use my bigger rivets. I think these are nine millimeter, so they're a little longer, the posts, but I think it'll work fine. Otherwise, if you need to, you can add some spacers back here to give the rivet something else to grab onto. But the reason I want to do the bigger one is because that way it covers more surface area because this is the only thing holding these straps in. So you want to make sure that it's nice and snug and secure. Perfect. Looks adorable already. And so now I'm going to move on to laying out my zipper pocket. And so from what I understand, this zipper pocket back here is because this is the one that we're gonna turn the entire bag through at the end. And I could be wrong. This is my first time making this pattern, but I'm pretty sure that that's how it's gonna go. Cause this is the one that I wanted to get rid of. Cause I figured already having a zipper on the front, blah, blah, blah. But yeah, I think that this is gonna be a turning pocket. So we are gonna go with it. I was just wondering if I should put a woven tag on the outside. I never do them outside. I always do them on the inside which I think I'll stick to that because I'll just add maybe my sonar tag back here. I was wondering, I'm kind of struggling with the decision because I would, you know, normally I tag my bags on the front, but I don't know. All right, I'll think through it. So I'm gonna put some double stick tape on the back here. And for overlays, I like to use quarter inch tape and I try to get down the center so that I can avoid stitching over it when possible. Now this particular tape does not seem to bother my machine at all, but the other tape from Waywack is so, so like thick. So it gums up my needles a little bit more, but this tape is a little bit thinner. I think that's why it's so, you can rip it so easily, but still works just as well. But yeah, my I've noticed that my machine doesn't have issues with this one. However, it could be because I use a thicker needle now too. I'm not sure. Okay, so I'm just gonna choose my own length down. So I don't even know, let me see. Let's see, what does the pattern say? You know, I always kind of march to the beat of my own drum on these kind of things, but let's, you know, let's just see. One, no, that's not it. Zipper lining pocket should be centered. 
I can't even tell. It's too much, too many words to try to scan and find, but it's in the pattern. I'm going to do it, I think, three inches from the top. Yep. So in order to make sure that it's centered correctly and nice and straight, you get to look at the back of my head for a second. So what I'm doing is, again, I'm centering my long edges so that way I can find my middle line easier. Just right off the cuff, it looks like it's right here. So I'm lining up the middle of my ruler on the midline, and then I'm also watching this line here. And you know, sometimes I get this wrong. So if it's wrong, we'll just lift it up and restick it. Oh, that looks pretty darn good to me. So that's what it looks like now. So now just like with every overlay, what we have to do is go and stitch around just the outside and then we're gonna cut out this interior. So let's go do that. Alrighty, Spideys, so we got it all stitched in, and then now what we get to do is cut a giant hole in our main panel. I remember the first time, first few times I did this, I was so petrified I was doing it wrong. Now I've gotten a lot more confident with it. Okay, so I just made that slice right there. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to carefully slide my scissors in between the layers and slice. Because you know the drill. We need to cut out this main piece of cork, or this exterior piece of cork, rather. It's black on black. It's a little hard to see, especially because it's like basically nighttime here. And if you do a lot of zipper overlays and you don't have a pair of these duckbill scissors, you are really missing out forever. I just never bought them. I would just use regular scissors, but these are specifically formulated to cut a flat area without cutting into the other area. So I know a lot of like garment makers use these because you're cutting really thin materials, but they're super helpful with cork as well. I kind of did a hack job, but that doesn't matter because it'll be on the inside. Um, and so while I've got this flipped over, I noticed these are a little long. I don't want to catch them in my seam, so I'm just going to trim these down while I'm back here. All right, so let's finish off our zipper pocket. What we're going to do is add some more double stick tape to this back side. And then we need to get our zipper, one of our short zippers, add the pull. Ooh, look how close I came to pulling it off. <laughs> Not today, zipper, not today. Y'all, if you did not notice, these these are fake tattoos from Brent, from Brandon's birthday. Because we dressed up like him. And look, they're not coming off. This one's kind of starting to scrape. But this these have been on now for a week. It's just crazy. They still look, I mean, for fake tattoos, they look pretty good. But I'm just shocked at how much they've stayed on. And it's kind of annoying too. I can't get them off. 
I've even tried um, oil, baby oil, and all of that. I can't get them off. Maybe rubbing alcohol. Just really dry my skin out. Okay. I love the look of black on black. And this is not disappointing me. So we're gonna flip it back over to this side and then do more double stick tape. And this one I like to do right over the edges of the tape, the seams, because then it holds the zipper tape down and it definitely will not be in my stitch line. Okay, I need to find one of our pocket sets. There. Two would be helpful. Now I'm gonna do my top first. And so be careful. So my direction, I'm gonna have these little like mountains going face up. So if you're using directional fabric, pay attention to that. All right, so stick it really well. And then I'm gonna fold it up and finger press it out of the way and lay the second pocket. Okay, we go over to the machine. I'm gonna start my stitch line here on the right-hand side. I'm gonna stitch down across and stop right over here. And then I'm gonna flip my zipper pieces around, my pocket pieces around, and then continue stitching. And I will go through it over there as well. So don't fret. Leave nice long tails here so that you can tie this off. back and tie off just like normal Now, I'm gonna pull this panel down and out of the way. And fold this one down too. And then carefully, I'm gonna stitch oops, from this right side. And I'm noticing an issue. And I might as well tell you. So I should have I should have pulled these through to this side before tying off because if you can tell, it wants to fold right on top of my zipper tape. I don't know. You see, I don't want to leave it like that because what might happen is when the zipper's being opened and closed, it might catch. I don't think it will, but I don't really want to take that chance. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to pop these stitches. And then I'm just gonna have to backstitch really, really well when I'm sewing the other side. So I'm just gonna pull, I'm gonna pull until these stitches kind of come out and my panel lays where I need it to lay. Because I want it to lay below where my zipper pull is gonna be going back and forth so that way it doesn't get caught. You know, that is so annoying when you have a zipper pull that gets caught in fabric.
I'm actually going to back all the way up. I'm going to back up more because see this popped all the way down to here. And I don't want to start stitching down here because that is going to impede my pocket. So I am just going to snip this so that it's flush. And I'm going to just go back like where we started. So I'm going to flip this section back up. And I'm just going to add my stay stitches in here so that no more of this comes undone. And now you're going to be able to see the stitching more. It's going to be more prevalent, but it's more important to me that the zipper stay put than it is of you not seeing thread. Machine is not happy to do it. It could use some leaven, some oil. Alright, let's try that again. Now, because I've already backstitched over here to save this thread in the side, I'm not going to worry about it. I'm just going to backstitch. got that squared away. Trim up our threads here. Then you just make sure that your zipper works. And all quiet on the western front there. There's something going on with the way that the machine is threaded. It's not feeding nicely. I don't know what the deal is. getting caught up somewhere. All right, well, we'll fix it, I guess, next time it happens. I don't really know. So now to finish off this pocket, we need to leave a birthing hole down here. But so I'm gonna start with my panel up and I'm gonna sew right over my zipper teeth and then down and I'm gonna come down and make my little L situation so that it's nice and easy to turn. to backstitch so really really well because this is going to be bearing the brunt of all of the turning at the very end of the bag. It should be fun getting a big bag through this little tiny hole. what it looks like on the back and then we'll go and trim this up and take off this excess here and then that back pocket is now a functional back pocket here is the completed back panel i love it we need to trim this down 
There's just something so classy about black on black with brass hardware. Also black on black with stainless hardware. I do like that look as well. I considered doing that, but I, I don't know. I feel like if I'm gonna use a stainless zipper, I don't want it to be nylon. I like the real metal teeth on a stainless. I feel like the metallic nylon teeth, it just doesn't quite convince me when it comes to silver. That's why I've been really pulling toward brass over the last couple of years. I do have some real metal zippers that have um, stainless teeth in them. So I didn't realize how far back my camera was. Um, but yeah, I just don't really ever use them anymore because I have so many of these now. But okay, so we have the completed back panel and I'm going to put it aside. I threw it on a chair, I didn't throw it on the ground, don't worry. Um, okay, so now I'm gonna go ahead and do the same process on my inside panel. So that way I can just get my pockets out of the way and then we'll move on to the front. Um, okay, so we need our lining front panel. Now these are a little tricky, so I don't know if you could tell, but so the lining front panel is a touch smaller than the lining main. The lining main is the same size as our back main, but our lining front panel is what we're gonna put our pocket on. So I'm just gonna repeat that same process that I did before and get this pocket added. And I'm gonna speed this part up just because we just went through it. So if you need to watch it in real time, just back up and rewatch that section. Okay. Okay, okay. Gotta pick out a tag. Oh, that one matches.
All righty, we are gonna get started on our front curved pocket. And the first thing that I'm gonna do is I'm gonna find my centers. So I'm gonna do that by just making teeny, 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 oh, that was a little bit bigger than a teeny, but making them really supposed to be way smaller than that tiny snip. Hopefully that does not show. But I'm gonna do the same for this guy and then also for my zipper tape. Oh, and so the pieces that you need to gather are the front pocket, exterior and lining. And you'll know that they're the front pocket because they have the squared off bottoms versus these other pieces that have the rounded. So we're working with the squared off sections. Okay, so I realized that I, of course, used my quarter inch seam allowance when sewing my murder knives on. And so I had an extra half inch, so I just trimmed a little bit off of my curve. So let's try it now. Okay, and then so Jenny bastes or sews hers down um, before making the zipper sandwich, but I'm just gonna go straight in because I'm a psychopath. Um, I am going to add some tape here just to help stabilize things. Hopefully it helps. So now we got to go in top stitch. So I'm going to do that with my cork side up. Um, if you wanted to, you could totally hit this with an iron. And then you could also quilt it, which maybe I'll consider doing that. So I didn't do it on the last bag, so maybe I'll do it on this one. But I don't know. I actually put my brand right there, so maybe not.
It's looking good, folks. Okay, so we are all good on this guy. So it looks good. I gotta say, judging from the photos, this is definitely a bigger bag than I expected. So it's not quite mini in my um, opinion, especially compared to the snack pack. The snack pack was teeny tiny. Um, but yeah, so this one is significantly bigger. So I don't, like this I think would qualify as a backpack. And I mean, obviously this is only a front pocket. Anyways, so now that you have this panel together, we need to grab our front pocket back. So that is the piece that has the curved edges here. And what we're gonna do is mark our centers all the way around, or not all the way around, rather, top and bottom, and then there is this line on the pattern, and that line I'm gonna transfer to this side here. And I suspect I might have a slight issue with the next step because of my issue that I had with my easing in and because of like the zipper, me not paying attention to my seam allowance. But we shall see, won't we? It'd be helpful if I could see the... There we go. So this line is going to act as the meeting point for the top piece on the next step. So it sits something along those lines. So that's the goal, at least. Let's see if we can get there. But for now, we are just going to lay our lining pocket back, or front pocket back, right side down, because this is going to create the actual pocket, right? So right side down, and then you clip around, and then we're going to baste it into place. There's a little bit of overhang here and that's okay according to the pattern so I'm gonna stitch it from this side up. I'm trying to. I don't normally stitch like this. I'm actually just going to cut this now <laughs> so that I can flip it over. Then this way, now I can sew from the top and I can see, and I feel like it's going to be a lot easier to baste my zipper here. Let's try this way. Now we have a completed inside pocket. That's a nice roomy pocket. I like that. Okie dokie. So this is what it should look like. It's a nice deep pocket in there now. It actually has a little bit of depth because of these corners. And so I'm just going to trim off anywhere that's not, you know, nice. Like right here, I missed it. So I had to go back and add a stitch line. So I'm just going to trim all this so that it's nice and flush. But you don't want to trim too much of it off, right? Because otherwise it's going to change the whole profile of your bag. So that's just something to consider. It's not so bad on the bottom if you have to cut some off because that's 
I just, I don't know. It just seems like it wouldn't be as obvious if you had to trim a little bit more off the bottom, but the sides, because they're such a particular shape and they help to create that depth, you don't want to take too much of that off. But anyways, okay, so now what we need to do is we need to add this moon piece, the top, what's it called? Oh, I didn't write it, but that shaped piece. <clears throat> we add that to here. And so the way that you do that and I think it might be easier to do it with my zipper open, so I'm just going to do that. But the way that you do that is you're going to take it and flip it so that it's right sides down. And with the middle line that you have marked, start clipping it. And then the point or the goal is to align this flat edge with the mark that we made earlier. So let's see if I can make that magic happen. That worked out a lot better for me than my my zipper easing in. So now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go and sew this into place using a quarter inch seam allowance and you do not top stitch it yet. Okay, so it's all done now. It's all, you know, uh, attached and whatnot. And I don't see anywhere in the pattern that where it says to top stitch this down. And I even went back through and looked through some photos and I couldn't see any top stitching on any of the examples here. And it makes sense because I feel like if you top stitch it down or if you top stitch it with this toward the up, then it can pull on the bag. So I feel like I want to top stitch it down onto the inside. So pulling this down and I'm going to go and add a stitch line here on the inside. And I, I might have just missed it. Um, I have a bad habit of scanning patterns and not really understanding and reading them. But I'm hoping that that doesn't come back to bite me in the butt. But that's what I'm going to go do now. I'm just going to add a top stitch with this seam going down and I'm gonna stitch on the inside of the zipper here. All right, so I feel like that lays a little bit better and it just kind of adds a tiny bit of structure to right there. So I think that was an okay move. Hopefully you agree. All right, so the next thing that we need to do is work on our top zipper. So the, the this is called the gusset in the pattern. And so what we're gonna do is just make a zipper sandwich, just like normal. So I'm just gonna lay the zipper face down on my exterior here. And I'm gonna use some double stick tape. Where that's not straight, you're gonna to want to straighten it now because once we sew it, you don't want to unpick it. Okay, now I'm just gonna repeat the process with the lining. And then I will meet you at the machine. And what we're going to do is just stitch this into place as you would expect. And then the next step is to flip and top stitch, but I am only going to top stitch my exterior down just like I do on all my bags
Okay, so we are at step 14, 13, 14. We're kind of at step 14 because if you followed my tutorial, then we've already stitched our handle down the center. And so what you need to do is find your center. I'm actually gonna do this with chalk. So find your center and make a mark. So here's my center line here. I'm just gonna line it up on the ruler so that you can see. And then as the pattern says, you mark three inches from that center line and then another half inch on both sides. So one, two, three, and then half inch. And then now you need to slide your D-rings on to the center. And then what I'm gonna do is I wanna add some double stick tape to the wrong side of this. So I'm just gonna transfer my mark to the back side so I know where to stop my tape. And then I'm gonna take my half inch tape and put it right down the center here up to that line. Okay, and then now the pattern gives you a measurement on placement here. And I'm actually just gonna, because my strap is bigger, so I did a one inch strap instead of a three quarter inch strap, so the measurement will already be off. And so I'm gonna try to do it centered, but I'm gonna take into account that I need to keep a seam allowance on this side. And we're not putting it through the top or through the lining. We're just gonna attach it to the exterior here. So I'm just gonna kind of like eyeball it to be honest with you. So right there, I think. I guess I could use my ruler since it's right here. So this, since I use a quarter inch, that will be my seam allowance right there. And then I want it to be centered within that. So that leaves me with just under two. So I'm gonna line this up right about there. Okay. And so I'm just gonna do this one side at a time. Okay, so there's one side. Now I'm just gonna slide my deer rings toward the center and do this side over here. Got a little wild there. Okay, that's one, that's one, two. So a quarter inch and then three eighths. Of course, this ruler doesn't have that measurement, so I am just gonna go back to how I did it before. Quarter inch and then three eighths. And then you can see there's some overhang here. Now you wanna push that all the way over and then lay that down. And then this obviously becomes the hang loop. There you go. You can see it there. So now what we need to do is I'm going to go to the machine and I'm going to stitch. Oh, wait, I just had a thought. Let me work through this. So the idea is that these guys will hang out right there. And I was considering doing this. So it would have to go. What I was thinking, just to keep you in the loop, was that this center handle, I was thinking about making it a rolled handle so that it would be the same width as the straps. But what I'm struggling with right now is if I do that, if I make it rolled, then I'm gonna have a hard time adhering it to this side unless I'm very careful with my measurements, but I think I can be. So I'm actually gonna 
go back a couple of steps. So I'm going to make a mark three quarters of an inch from that three inch mark that we made three inches from the center. I'm going to make a mark at three quarters of an inch on both sides. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to fold this in half and I'm going to add some stitching. I'm going to try to just keep it all together since it's already taped. But I want to add some stitching to roll this handle before I move on. Okay, so I'm going to go back to the machine and I'm going to stitch in between these two lines that I just made to make this a rolled handle. And hopefully it works. Okay. Wish me luck. The only thing is I just don't want it to shift on me. I'm actually going to move my clip onto the outside of the line, my starting line here. And then I'm just going to stitch one eighth from the edge. Mission accomplished. Okay, so now the idea that I have it, I've got it rolled. I'm gonna hit this with a lighter real quick. A little threads, bye bye thread. Okay, so the idea is that this will go layer, stitch up to there, add a rivet. And same over here by George. I think it just might work. We'll see. It looks a little funky because it's not straight. Thinking maybe with just like a little bit of molding, I can make it work. So I'm going to lose my line here. So I need to remark it. There we go. Remark this line. Now, so this line is what we stitch up to on both sides. So I'm gonna go do that and then I'll finagle with this and add some rivets or do something, make this sit nicer. We'll have to see what we come up with, huh? So I'm just gonna stitch eighth of an inch from each side on my handle. Okay, so this is what I've got right now. So you can see I stitched up the side, across, and back down. I did it on that side as well. And so what I didn't take into account is that because this isn't a rounded handle, it's flat, essentially. I think it's just going to have to take some maneuvering, and then it'll lay nicely. And so my plan is I'm going to pull these would-be D-rings, but I'm going to pull my loops over to meet up with this stitch line and then I'm going to put a rivet 
uh, right here so that it locks it into place. That's the idea at least. on this side. Okay, so you can see how my handle is like kind of laying a little, I don't know, can you see that? It's like kind of laying a little wonky. So, I'm just gonna pour some pull on it. But so another thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna add a couple, or I'm gonna add a rivet here at the very end of my stitching on both sides, just so that in the event that my stitching pops, which I put a bunch of stay stitches in, but just in case it does pop, there'll be the rivet there as well. Where'd it go? Oh, there it is. It's so hard sewing in my studio at night because the light is just not great. Let's get these rivets into place. Oh. Okay, so this is what we've got now. It's a little funky, but hopefully it'll even out. So that's what it looks like right now. Okay, you just fold this over. I'm just gonna, ooh, I almost pulled my zipper pull right off. I'm just gonna clip this together until I find out what the next step is. I think I know what the next step is, but you know, what happens when you make assumptions? Okay, so the next step is actually to create the full gusset by adding these pieces and I did end up losing my zipper pull so let me try to put that back on real quick okay there we go and then I'm actually going to add a piece of tape to the inside of here to hold everything. Glue would work perfectly as well, or you could even baste it together. I think, am I gonna hurt myself with this one? I don't think so, I'm gonna go for it. Okay. All right, now this is taped down, so that should be good to go. And so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take my exterior and lay it on top just like this. And clip it into place. I'm going to do the same thing on this side. And then I'm going to take this guy and do it on this side. And so I'm going to try to do it the same way. There we go. Nope, nope, that won't be. Okay. 
Okay, and then we're gonna go to the machine. We're gonna stitch across both sides here. I'm going... Okay, so this needs to be sewn at a half inch seam allowance and I'm actually going to follow that direction so that it fits nicely. We'll see if that changes anything. And so she says to flip the gusset and top stitch, but I'm just going to flip the exterior down and leave the gusset up and top stitch it like that. on the side. Okay, and then we pull this down and make sure that it's laying correctly and baste it into place. So I'm just going to toss some clips on here just to make sure that nothing shifts around. Okay, so we got that all done. Um, my lining here got a little short, so when I was basting it, I came in, but then you could see I ended up taking up a bunch over here, and my thought was that I would just trim it down. But then after really inspecting it, I don't wanna get too much closer to this handle, this top handle. So I'm just gonna try to rock it as it is. And uh, you know, if we run into any issues, I'll fix it then. And yeah, so we're gonna go for it. So the next step is to find the center. Same up here. The way that I found that is I just laid my two side seams on each other and that's what I'm using as my point of reference. And then same over here. And then what we need to do is we need to lay this front panel inside this guy. So with exteriors right sides together we got to match the top center of the front top panel to the top center of the zipper side. Okay, so this side. It seems like this needs to be like this. And so I'm going to take this center and match that center. Flip and match these centers here. And then, does this have a center? I'm just gonna start to ease it in. So 
So there's like a little bitty, 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 tiny gap right here. And I think it's just because where that pattern piece is cut flat. So I'm going to try to pull it up a little more because I feel like it'll leave a hole right there and you'll be able to see it if I don't catch it enough. Okay, so same issue on this side. And so we're getting into the zipper tape up here. And this is where you'll want to be careful because this zipper tape is a lot less um, structured than the cork or your other interface textile. So you just, yeah, just something to think about. Oh my gosh, wouldn't this be incredible if this just worked the first time? Sheesh. It'd be so nice. So far, so good. Holy guacamole. Is this gonna work? Oh, I got a slight, very, very slight issue, but let's see. Ease it on in over here. That's, ooh, this is gonna be so cute. Okay, so now what we need to do is go to the machine and we're gonna stitch this all the way around because the next step is we take our pocket panel and we sandwich it on top, encasing this open gusset. And then that's where the magic happens. That'll be like the first pocket flip. But yeah, so I think to make things easier, we should stitch this down as to not, you know, uh, make life harder on ourselves. I'm just going to start right here where that little hole is or can be. Come on, you. area is super thick. And so this is all thick down and through here. So just take your time and go slow. And so you can see it's kind of already got a bubble in it. And so what I've found is if you kind of shift the gusset down, creating an overhang, you can ease some of that excess out, but you just gotta be careful because if you do it too much, it's gonna really change the depth of your base. But if you just do it ever so gently, you can potentially get some of this excess out of here. this is how you get puckers right here is having too much having your gusset be too big for the bag and hopefully the gods are on my side
Okay, let's see. Oops. Oh my. Ay, 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 ay. Okay, new bobbin. We are good to go. Let's finish this off. Okay, there we go. Now, let's go to the other side and check. Okay, moment of truth. Flip it, make sure we got all the areas. Okay, so it got the side there. That's good, that's good. Oh, this is where it was a little messed up. Okay, cool. Got that side too. Awesome. And the bottom looks good. Nice and round. Gosh, something about black and antique brass, man. It's one of my faves. Okay, so now I'm going to flip this back in this direction. And what we have to do any wayward threads, but you take this panel, your inside panel that has the pocket, unzip your pocket, and then we're gonna, well, first let's find our centers, because we're gonna match our centers and sew it on top of this gusset. Okay, so not here but here. And then clip and work your way around. Okay, so now we have a pea pod, and so we're gonna go and stitch all the way around. So I didn't uh, pay attention, obviously, to what way Jenny stitched it, whether it was this side up or this side. I feel like this side up would be easier because I've squished everything and this is the way that I clipped it. However, this is where my stitch lines are, and I think that it would be helpful to be able to see them because then I would know that I'm hitting all the marks. So I'm gonna attempt to do it from this side, following my stitch lines from before, maybe even a touch inside of them. Okay, so this is what we've got. It's the inside of a bag. It's nice and flat right now, but so I'm just going to trim up a little bit here and there. Okay, and then now you have to flip this whole thing through here. It's pretty genius. Pretty genius. You can see some of my stitches from before, but I am not going to go back in. I'm not going to flip this thing right or back through that hole for those little stitches, especially because I feel like I can catch them whenever we top stitch. And so that is the next step is you flip it this side out and then if you unzip your top zipper 
and you can ex access this panel right here and top stitch this into place. So I'm just gonna finger press this a bunch and then I will see you at the machine to top stitch. So you just gotta kind of get as close to this point, this juncture as you can. But honestly, you're never, it's just gonna be a dead stop on the inside because you can't get down here unless you wanna be like crazy brave and try to stitch all the way around, but that does not seem recommended. It's way too thick. I'm gonna slide this under here. I'm gonna get as close as I can. Mm. And a little. This this is why I do not like to top stitch like this. See, this right here where it got a little crazy, right there. That is why I do not top stitch my seams. Point in case. Whoa. Okay, so but from out here, it looks pretty cute. Check it out. As you can see here, it's a nice top stitch curve, curved edge. I feel like my brand would have looked really good right there, but I wasn't sure how I was gonna get that. I guess it's not terrible, but this, this does the type of stuff that really bugs me on my work. But you know what? Can't be perfect. It's the first one. Okay, so now that that is done, I'm going to pull my pocket back through and close it up. All right, I can see the light at the end of the tunnel and it is bright, babies. We are getting close. Um, so you need to flip your bag so that it looks like this and then grab your exterior panel that has the pocket, unzip it of course, and then now we're gonna lay right sides together and clip all the way around and sew. Okay, so this is what she looks like right now. And I'm just gonna trim off, I had some of this gusset or um, panel overlap, so I'm just gonna trim down my seams a touch. And so now we do the same thing that we did before for this side. We're going to take our last remaining lining and we need to encase this seam. So we're going to smush all of this down. Let's find our centers here. Okay, so you smush all of your centers down and then clip and sew. All right, this is it. This is the last, besides closing up this turning hole, 
This is it. Ooh, bop. I'm now a singer. I'm ready to be done with this. Okay, now, for what I presume to be a really hard part, but equally gratifying, we get to flip the entire bag out. I have no idea how I'm gonna do this. Okay, so I had to take a second, like figure out how I was actually gonna get it through here. And the only way that I figured out is I took the inside and tucked it into the pocket and then now I'm just working it all through very very slowly okay she's out looks good looks like a leather bag Okay, so now I just need to close this hole. I always think that next time if I make another one, I would try to do like a really long external pocket to make that process way easier and just have to reconfigure the, the thingamajigs. Okay, go close this up, I'll be right back. She's done. I gave her a good press, steamed the cork a little bit because she came out looking like a bruised baby stuck in the birth canal. So that's exactly what she was. But she's here now and she's beautiful and we're so happy. Um, I love it. It's such a cool bag. Uh, so here's like the inside pocket. This is very cavernous. It's not, um, let's see. So it's not quite big enough to fit my laptop, but it's still a really good size. Uh, and then it has this back pocket here. And then let's clip. Let's do the final ceremony. So clip. And. Clip. I mean, could she be any cuter? I don't know, honestly. Um, definitely worth how hard it was. I don't want to say that it was hard, but it used so many turning holes, or like two turning holes is, you know, a lot on top of the cocooning of everything, but it's just a brilliant design. Um, I am really impressed. I never would have even considered that uh the the method that jenny designed this with i really love this band and it adds a lot of extra you know strength right in through here um i just think it's a really cute bag it 
to me, this, I would not consider this a mini. I guess it's a mini because it's not like a school bag, but you could easily make it bigger and it could be a school bag. If you used easier materials, I think that this bag you could whip up in a snap. Um, but like this, these corners here where this all comes together and then these, like everything is all right there, which looks really cool. It creates such a cool finished product, but it's definitely, you know, a, a small challenge. Um, that being said, it can be done. Obviously you just watched me do it. And yeah, I don't know. I'm, it's always the ones that, that test you, you know, that you're the most proud of. Right. So yay, we did it. Good job, friends. I hope that you guys stuck it out and finished this bag with me. It is a doozy, but it is well, well worth it. That final turn is a challenge. Obviously you saw how hard I had of a time with it. Um, but I do think that it's well worth, you know, all the effort. And so I hope that you do too. And if you would please give me a like, share, comment below, let me know what you think. And what other Sincerely Jen patterns would you like to see me make? I love that all of her bag patterns are Friends related. I never really watched Friends and over the last couple of years, Brandon and I have kind of started piddling around with it and I recognize a lot of the sayings and a lot of the names from Jen uh, Jenny's bag pattern names, which I just think is a fun detail. But anyways, okay, so stay tuned for next week's, next week's backpack back. It's been a long day, y'all. I did all this in one go. It's been a long day. Now I have to go edit the video. But anyways, join me next week for the next backpack bash pattern. You'll see. Bye, guys.